Hi, welcome to my channel. It's uh, Dr. V. Jayakumar. Having studied all the fundamental concepts of static force analysis in the previous lecture video, now we are going to talk about how to solve a numerical problem static force analysis of a four bar mechanism. Of course, static force analysis problem can be solved by both analytical and graphical method. Always I prefer graphical method for the simple reason that graphical method gives the insight about the subject. It makes one to understand the subject far better. So from both examination and the subject point of view, by and large, graphical methods are preferred. So let's get started. Yes, this is a given problem. Let us read the problem carefully. A, B, C, D, four bar mechanism is given and we need to determine the required value of torque T and all the constrained forces on links. The more importantly, they mentioned here the mechanism in static equilibrium and also external force is given here. Of course, the dimensions of the links are given. What we need to find? We need to find what are all the various forces acting on various links and also the driving torque T which might be acting here. Right? The problem is simple. First, we have to understand this is a dynamics of machines problem for which we are going to apply the conditions of equilibrium, which is predominantly a statics problem, which needs to be applied for a structures. That means we have to understand that we are making some assumptions in order to do that. Static force analysis means we assume that the mass of all these four links are negligible and also it will have very negligible acceleration or very low acceleration and hence the dynamic force or inertia force m into a is so minimal compared to the applied force applied force value is very big in that case we can ignore the inertia effect of all the masses of all the four links that is the first assumption the assumption number two here we are not going to consider the frictional forces at all the joints right because of these assumptions it qualifies for static force analysis this understanding is very essential yes let us move on to the solution these are the three steps which will be employed to solve this problem before proceeding there i am going to use this force symbol what that force symbol says if f suffix ij means the force that link I exerts on link J or to understand better let me give this number F34 that means we have two links link 3 and link 4 the amount of force exerted by link 3 on link 4 that is the meaning of F34 so this is the notation we are going to use for this force so now let us go on to step number one so what the step number one says we need to draw the given mechanism as it is to some suitable scale right this is the given mechanism so i'm going to redraw it let us choose the scale so for drawing as i said we need all that drawing instruments right so what is that ad given ad is 215 mm so that means 2.15 is a very uh, basic constructions so 2.15 then ad is done then i have to go to ab i can make an arc now i could take from cd cd is 250 so 2.5 centimeter so just by using all the given data and applying the basic geometrical construction to the tech and scale 
we should be getting this given diagram right step number one is done now let us get on the step number two the step number two says that we need to draw free body diagram of all links we have four links i call uh, this as fixer link one then kind of a crank link two then coupler link then output link we call it as a rocker now what we are going to do is we have to draw a free body diagram of all the four links for fixed link no free body diagram is required so one we have done now let us move on to a second link what we can do is since we have already drawn this one to the scale so we can draw a parallel line directly that's the reason why if you use a roller scale keep your scale here simply roll your scale here you should be able to do that so this is the parallel line you can bring it anywhere right so this is your link 2 for this link 2 i am going to denote all the forces acting on it as you could see there will be a force acting along this which we called as constrained force i will be having a force along the direction of link 3 like this since it has to revolve this should be one more force here which will be in the opposite direction opposite to this right then only couple will be created then only turning moment will happen what is the name of the force this is the link 2 this force is given by link 3 on link 2 so i call this as f32 similarly here the link 1 is exerting a force on link 2 what is the direction how do we know the direction this is where we have to understand when will we get a turning moment this turning moment or couple will be created only when we have here a force which is parallel to this parallel and opposite to this force so i could understand the direction of the force here by using that logic so i do not know the magnitude but i know the direction this is the direction of f32 then this is the direction of f12 what is the meaning of f12 force exerted by link 1 on link 2 so we know direction directions yes do you know magnitude now unknown so i give it for you this way so this is free body diagram of link 2 now let us go for free body diagram of link 3 the same way let us copy this diagram so you need to draw parallel line when you do it on your paper but uh, for my sake i am doing it here i can bring it anywhere i plan to bring it here i call this as link 3 if you understand the basics right you know that at this ends we will be having constrained forces the constrained forces what it makes to move in certain direction and the ends i know that here i will be having a force which is acting along this direction the force is in fact exerted by link 2 on link 3 how can we use the notation f23 now let us come to this end this end i have link 4 which exerts force on link 3 but you know from the basics that this link 3 is a two force member and the ends here also this is the direction at which it must be acting directions of both the forces are known do we know magnitude as of now no so this is my dear students free body diagram of link 3 is that clear now we have the final one link 4 the same way let me draw a parallel line right 
so I have copied both so you need to draw parallel line to link 4 and parallel line to this force so we got that so this is what we call link 4 now what are the forces acting on link 4 in addition to this applied force 2000 Newton which is known we are very sure that there will be a force which will be exerted by link 3 on 4 and also definitely we will be knowing the direction what is the direction the direction of course will be parallel to the link 3 and hence i will be drawing the direction here what is this name the name is force exerted by link 3 on 4 i call this as f3 4 but very interestingly what will be the direction of f14 that is unknown i am not sure so what can i do right now to start with i can put some zigzag shape what i mean to say is i do not know the direction to start with so by just going through that i can say applied force magnitude and direction are known for f3 4 direction is known magnitude unknown and also we have here f14 both magnitude and direction are unknown so this one i call it as free body diagram of link 4 this is the last step the last step says let us apply conditions of equilibrium it is just like a statics problem that you have solved in your engineering mechanics when i have a separate free body diagram let us try to apply conditions of equilibrium right so let me start where can we start even can we able to start here i don't think we can start here because we have two unknowns similarly here i have two force member both are unknowns very difficult to find so let me try something to be done here so uh, what is this this is nothing but member having how many forces three forces three force member here i need to bring in the theory when i have three forces acting on a member when can you say that member is in equilibrium the member can be in equilibrium when those three forces if i could able to draw a polygon which i call it is a force polygon force polygon must be closed then we can claim this condition is satisfied sigma f equal to zero the first condition of conditions for static equilibrium is satisfied what is the second condition the summation of moment equal to zero when that summation of moment would be zero when the all the three forces are extended they should intersect at one point that point we call it as point of concurrency when you can have point of concurrency then we can claim it satisfies summation of moment equal to zero clear so this is the theory i am going to use it here for which link link number four two things i am going to do one is force polygon another one is point of concurrency i am trying to find that point of concurrency right so this is my first force so i am going to extend this force so let me extend this line then i am extending this fine these two forces are intersecting that means this must be the point of concurrency that means what must be the direction of the other force other force if i assume direction somewhere here will it make a point of concurrency no if i make here this will go will it make a point of concurrency no so it cannot have any direction please understand this f14 direction is unknown but knowing the engineering knowledge i am trying to understand what would be the direction so what can i do now is i can start from o itself towards this point o excellent this must be the direction 
at which this F14 must be acting. Then you must be asking, what about this? Now you can erase it because the direction initially I have given roughly. That is not the actual direction. So now I can draw the actual direction. What is the actual direction now? This is the actual direction. I know that it is acting along this direction. Whether it acts this direction or that direction. Because even it can act downward, still the extended line of action might give you the point of concurrency. So still we are not sure about this direction yet. But we got point of concurrency. Now sigma m equal to 0 condition is satisfied right now. Now I am trying to do sigma f s equal to 0. How to do that? I am going to draw the force polygon. So I have one force known force. How much? 2000 Newton. So let us apply here the same thing. What is that? 1 centimeter equal to 500 Newton here. So let me draw 4 centimeter line. So what I will do? I will copy this. Then I will paste this. So I am getting the direction. So I can bring it here. By further 1 centimeter. So I start from here. Right. So probably whoa. Force polygon is nothing but force addition, vector addition. So this force is over. Now I know the direction of this force. So let me draw the direction here. How can I bring that? So you have to do all parallel lines. It's a matter of drawing all parallel lines. So this is the vector addition. The tail of second vector should be connected with the head of the first vector. Since I don't know the magnitude, I'm just extending. F14, I do not know the direction. So I don't know where to start. What can I do is I can start from O. So what can I do it here is I can draw parallel line from here. This I can start from O. Now this intersects. Yes, this is the required force polygon. Since it must close, it should form a cycle. So this is the direction. This is F34. This is F14. Excellent. Now we got the exact direction. So now I could erase this. Now we can confirm this direction. Yes, we have completed this force polygon. Now we have come to the calculation part. How can I find the force F34? Measure side AB and multiplied by the scale, you will be getting the answer. So similarly by measuring the side BO and multiply by the scale. So I got for me about 2.4. So how much this 1200 approximately 1200 Newton is the answer. Next, so we got two forces from link four. Shall I move on to link three? Now from link three, we can write F43 is equal to F23. See the diagram here. F43 is equal to F23. We can write this value F43 is equal to F23 is equal to 950 Newton. So all done now. Now let us come to the last answer, uh, link 2. Now from link 2, we can write F12 is equal to F32, which is equal to 950 Newton. Now the final answer we are looking at is to find D. We know both forces are equal. That means couple is going to be formed. But I need to know the distance between these two equal forces. So let me find H. How can I find H? Let me extend this. Okay. Now I need to draw perpendicular to this. So we got this point. And we can draw that line. 
measure the site. So from this diagram, measuring the value h and multiplied by the scale to the chosen scale, I got about 200 mm. Therefore, torque is I can put either F12 or F32. Anyhow, the magnitude remains same and into 0.2, right? Into H. So 950 multiplied by 0.2, I am getting that answer is 190 Newton meter. We are getting the direction in the counterclockwise direction. That's all about static force analysis of four bar mechanism by graphical method. Hope you found it very interesting and useful. If you like the work, please press the subscribe button and also the bell icon so that to get notified all my future videos. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.